saying congratulations on this album. I, I sat down and took a listen to it, and it is such an amazing album. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. We're uh, we're pretty happy with it. It came out kind of as we uh, wished and planned. So yeah, it it is a dark album, but there's a beauty to this album as well. I was wondering if you could start off by telling us a little bit about what you were hoping to achieve as a band with this album. Um, yeah, well, as you said, there, there, there's something um, almost magical about finding beauty in sadness and destruction and death. And even though, you know, the, the album is pretty bleak, you know, end of the world by by humans, we still try to make it beautiful, like, um, like a nice novel. But yeah, it's... Um, I'm not sure what to say. Uh, Everything we kind of planned for with this uh, um, album came into fruition. We had a vision pretty early. And then, you know, all of the lyrics and the music, they just came very quickly in, uh, and uh, naturally, actually. Yeah, that the, the lyrics, did that come from the world around us at the moment? Because we live in such a crazy world. Here in Australia, our last two bushfire seasons have been the worst bushfire seasons that we've ever seen did did things like that was that what helped you with the lyrics well i i wrote most of the lyrics before uh, the pandemic really really started so i think i wrote most of them at the end of 2000 uh 2019 uh yeah sure it did help, you know, the state of the world was a major uh, inspiration for me. But um, I tend to, to find most inspiration from the nature around. And if the nature is suffering, that's also a part of the inspiration. Yeah. You mentioned that it, it almost played out like a novel. Was that how you approached the songwriting this time around, as if you were writing a novel? Uh, so, uh, to be a Sarit same, the main composer of the band, he, uh, well, I guess we all have the same, but we try to make it kind of cinematic. Uh, we wanted to feel like every song could be its own movie or its own novel. I guess the novel aspect comes from the lyrics, but um, yeah, we, we wanted to feel like an uh, epic, melancholic movie all of the songs yeah and that movie feeling that of course has come across into the video clips as well do you pretty much know what you're going to do with video clips from the start because you do go into each song with that cinematic frame of mind well because we we're we kind of know our style we we know what kind of videos we won't do we won't do the classic uh be in the forest, play our instruments, or you know something like that. We will uh, all from our first video we released back in two thousand seventeen, um, uh, Godless Serenade. It was had this epic feeling to it, it's like a movie almost. So we know that at least. And then we have uh, our good friend uh, Isak from Svartna Film, which uh, makes music videos and short movies. He has really helped us really uh, encapsulate this uh, epicness that we, we, we always have. So, yeah. The, the atmospheric feel, we were talking about the beauty to this album. What comes first for you? Is it the lyrics or the music? And, and what's that songwriting process like for the band? Um, usually, it's not all the time, but usually... Uh, to be, yes, he, he has an idea, he makes up a, 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 a song, he made some riffs, some melodies at home, he then shows the band and we all listen, we, we say what we like, what we dislike, and we, we have a kind of a feeling for it. Uh, and sometimes I do write the lyrics after I heard, but usually I tend to, I want to write the lyrics before I hear the music, really, because they are both telling a different story, but the same story at the same time. So, uh, and sometimes even the lyrics come first, and then I tell the feeling that I want for Tobias, and then he 
tries to make something from it. it kind of like um, uh, we have a song called Slow Drown. That's where the, the lyrics came first. And I really tried to explain the, the mood of it. And then he kind of took those ideas and made it into uh, uh, a song. Yeah. So when so take uh, Slow Drown for an example with that song, that is a, a song that is basically looking at a journey through the minds of somebody with dementia. How much of that discussion do you two have when you're putting that track together about the the real theme of the song? Well, I, I had a vision, you know, I wanted to... Uh, uh, most of the songs are quite uh, Scandinavia-centric, so I envisioned uh, an old lady living somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and she had the early onset of dementia, and then you just follow her journey through uh, um, the deterioration of her, her mind. And, you know, she will die alone with dementia. No one will remember her. So when I told my vision and my story for to be, I see he really understood what I was uh, uh, going with it. And uh, uh, he just came. It, it was actually one of the songs that took a bit longer than the rest because... Uh, yeah, it was the only song that had this uh, kind of uh, um, lyric first hand and then the music. So it took a bit longer, but it's, it's one of my favorites. I think it will be the dark horse of the, of the album. Definitely. One of my favorites was End of Message. It, um, just that thought that that's the last message kind of being sent out was such a, a, a beautiful feeling listening to it. Tell us a little bit about End of Message and what that track was like for you to write as well. Yeah, so it, I think it was um, to be as he had an idea of like a, a, like a radio tower that sends out transmission throughout like a, to, to see if there's any survivors after the apocalypse. And then I took that idea to have... Uh, very bleak uh, homage, like what would the last person scream out towards the world, curse the world, if you will, before, you know, he takes his last breath and maybe this will be transmitted, you know, uh, out towards the cosmos. And if someone would hear it, they will just, the last thing they will hear from planet Earth was just, you know, how, how everything sucks and how we destroyed what we had. So I kind of tried to want it to be maybe it's a, the most uh, angry uh, lyric wise of all of, of the one because it's really it's an it's an unforgiving song it, it really lets no room for beauty really or for reconciliation towards the humans definitely and you mentioned before that this was written before the pandemic what about the recording? Were you guys recording when the pandemic first hit? And if so, was that affecting the way that you had to record this album? No. So we recorded it during the pandemic. And uh, the, the good thing about the pandemic, I guess, was it gave us ample time to focus on the album because we were, you know, in the midst of um, uh, still playing songs from uh, Not Out of It. So our previous album, and we haven't really... We, we, we felt like we, we haven't really explored all of those songs live yet. So it seems like we have uh, skipped an album playing live. But that's, uh, that's another story. But no, it actually made us really be able to focus on the songs. And uh, during the pandemic, when we started recording, it just because there were really no restrictions in that sense in, in Sweden, there were... Uh, so it didn't really affect us recording. It just gave us time, I guess, to do it. Yeah. When you do go to play live, does that mean that the next time you tour, you will kind of focus on these two albums? Because this album itself almost feels like it needs to be played in its entirety live. So is that something that you've thought about in the future, what you will do now that you've got these two albums that you haven't toured with yet? I mean, we, we do have a upcoming set list for our uh, next gigs, and it is a mixed bag um, because we, we know that uh, some people 
preferred the first album, some people preferred the second album, and some people preferred the new album. But for our own sanity, we will play uh, most from the new one. But uh, yeah, maybe one time we will do more of a, a themed gig where we play the whole album. But uh, I guess most fans, they like it to be a bit mixed. I mean, yeah. so we'll see. Now, with the vinyl version that I can't wait to get my hands on, there is a novel. Tell us a little bit about that novel and why you decided to include it with the vinyl version. Well, uh, Black Lodge, uh, our label, they've been really good for us. uh, And they are open to any of our ideas. So a couple of years ago, me and Tobias talked about, oh, it would be cool to maybe release a... Uh, you know, a coffee table book with nice pictures of the uh, different parts of where we grew up with maybe some uh, lyrics or poems, you know, just something, you know, we were just uh, spitballing. And we're not really there yet that we feel that we could justify releasing something that big. So we talked about maybe having a book uh, that was, you know, in line with the theme of uh, Arkivet. So, uh, to be us know about this uh, person who lives uh, in the same area as him, and he's a horror, Swedish horror author, Mikael Strömberg. And, yeah, so we told him about the, the theme of the album. We told him about the name of the album. And um, I have already wrote and uh, written a... a, a uh, lyric called the archive but uh, didn't really feel uh, the best so after he wrote the book a short novel i took ins- i did my interpretation of the book to write the lyrics for the archive and then to be us and our friend east from Svartna film they took the inspiration from the book and made their interpretation of the video. So it was three different interpretations of each other. But uh, yeah, and uh, the the book feels really nice. It's short. I mean, it's not, you know, it won't take you a week to read it. You can read it in one go. And it's just um, a fun thing, you know. It will both be in Swedish and uh, English. And uh, some people will like it, some people won't. But it's, you know, it's fun to try new things. And uh, so why not? Definitely. Well, I cannot wait to read it, but for now on our show, we're going to play The Gentle Touch of Humanity. So to finish up the interview, what would you like to say to all of our listeners out there before they go out and grab a copy of the album on August 28th? And is there a chance that you guys might come to Australia sometime when everything opens back up as well? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I guess... uh when people do listen to Arkivet and uh, our two songs that we release now, the Archive and the Gentle Touch of Humanity, it's uh, it is a uh, vision how we see if the Earth was sentient and how would it write its own testament to the future. And this is the seven songs that would encapsulate uh, the horrors the Earth had experienced through uh, our existence. And... Um, well, you know, I've been to Australia before, not playing music, so I would really like to go back there and play. It seems like we were getting a bit of a fan base down there, so I, it's far from impossible for us going down there. But uh, if everything works out, we would love to go down there and play for you. Definitely. Well, Nine, thank you so much for chatting to us today. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you, and thank you for bringing us what is one of the albums of the year. Thank you so much. Pleasure is mine, and thank you.